The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camel stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. <laughs> Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's guest and famous columnist is Hedda Hopper, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey, Abbott! Oh, there you are, Costello. Oh, boy, Abbott, Abbott. Boy, something terrible just happened. What happened? Here, read this telegram. Now, let's see it. It says, uh, your uncle's will has just been read, and you have inherited three million dollars. Why, Costello, that's great. Uh, what are you crying about, though? It ain't my telegram. I found it on the street. Oh. <laughs> and I'm mad, too. All right, now that's ridiculous. Now listen, as mayor of Sherman Oaks, I've called a meeting at City Hall tonight to decide that we've decided to publish a paper. Yeah, we need new ideas. Though. Oh, well, Abbott, I got an idea for your newspaper that'll stand people on their heads. What's your idea? Print your paper upside down. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny joke. All right, never mind that. We don't want those kind of jokes. Just talk sense, please. Okay, I'll talk sense. Now, look, Abbott, when do you want me to take charge of the paper? What do you know about the newspaper business? I wrote a four-page article in the Examiner this morning on fresh milk. Here, look at it. Four pages on milk? Four pages on milk. I only see two lines. The editor condensed it. Okay, condensed it. <laughs> I didn't have much. It was all just skimmed news. Skimmed? All right, Costello. You don't know anything about news. Oh, don't. Did you know that the Joneses who live across the street from you had a fight last night and Mr. Jones left the house for good? Are you sure that he left her for good? I'm positive. He even erased his ring from the bathtub. Hey, oh, <laughs> Costello, that's not the kind of news we want. We want stories about important people, celebrities. Ah, then I'm your man, Abbott. I'm the kid you're looking for. Now you're talking. Did you know that Ann Sheridan lives right next door to me? She does? Yes. And did you know that every morning she sings in the shower? Costello, that's news. You said it, and that's not all. Not not all? No. This morning, when she was singing in the shower... Yes? I sneaked out my back door. Yes, yes. I tiptoed over... Close to her house? Yes, yes. Brother, can she sing? <laughs> Costello, will you please be serious? Oh, here's Ken Niles. Ah, good evening, Costello. Hello, Mayor Abbott. Say, hey, Bud, I understand you're going to start a newspaper, and I'd like to write a daily column on household pets. I know all about animals. I'll see you, too. Look at that old horse you married. <laughs> <laughs> now, stop that. I think Ken is just the man to give advice on the care of pets. Oh, uh, yeah? He gave me a flea cure for my dog. Now I can't find the dog. Look, all I told you to do is rub the dog down with alcohol. I did that! The fleas got drunk and dragged the dog away. <laughs> Now I'll never see my little Girdle again. Hey, girdle? Girdle. How did you happen to name your dog Girdle? Because we keep him tied up all day and then let him out at night. Oh. <laughs> and another thing, Bud. Your newspaper will need a woman's touch. You know, uh, my lovely wife is a regular news hawk. With that beak, she looks more like a pelican. <laughs> she looks more like a pelican. Oh, I heard that remark, you fat food filcher. I said it for you to hear. That's how we bring you in each week. <laughs> oh, so you don't like my face, eh? Do you want, me, you want to make something out of it? Do I want to make something out of it? If I was an Indian, I'd make a totem pole out of it. Now, Costello. And I would make you low man. Aye, Costello, please. Mrs. Niles may be very valuable on our newspaper. Oh, she may be. This is somebody's line, and it's mine. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, come on. Yes, sir. Be a nice boy. You could put her picture in the weather column. The weather column? Wait a minute, Costello. What would my wife's picture be doing in the weather column? After looking at her face, nine days of rain would be a pleasure. <laughs> Including electrical storms. Yeah, all right, all right. Yes, yes. With thunder. Yeah, all right, all right. All right, blue, blue, blue. All right, all right never mind that. Forget about flash it. Flash your lights. All right. Blue, blue, blue. Quiet. Those pleasure nights... Quiet, Costello. Just a minute now. Let's... It's a puss on that chair. Now, wait a minute. If Mrs. Niles will accept, I'm going to make her the fashion editor of the woman's page. Ah, you've made a wise choice, Mr. Rabbit. Just look at it. Doesn't she dress beautifully? Oh, Kenneth. Oh. oh, Mr. Rabbit, this is just an old thing that I wear to peel potatoes. Looks like the old thing the potatoes came in. <laughs> oh. Oh, nothing. Maybe if you took out some of the potatoes, you wouldn't look so lumpy. Hello. <laughs> 
Oh, I like that one. Take it easy. You should talk. You. You. Yes, I should talk. Continue. You bargain basement blubberhead. What's the matter? Don't you like the suit I'm wearing? You call that a suit, huh? Mm-hmm. It looks like a mistake with sleeves. <laughs> I'll say, just look at him. The drape in his coat doesn't even cover the droop in his pants. <laughs> oh, darling, you certainly dusted him off. Oh, no, sweetheart, you're the one that dusted him off. Oh, my see you really dusted him off. If Vivian McGee is listening, I'll trade him two old dust mops for a can of wax. <laughs> Costello, you've got to stop insulting people. You'll never make a newspaper man. Abbott, I'll be the best reporter you ever saw. I've got some hot news right now. Yes? What is it? I just saw Shirley Temple in the drugstore eating a sundae. You call that hot news? Certainly. It was a hot, hot sundae. Oh, <laughs> don't be silly. I want headline news. News of worldwide importance. Well, why didn't you say so? Hand me that telephone. What are you going to do? Hello, operator. Give me Adolf Hitler in Berlin. Adolf Hitler? Yes, he gives me all the news. No. Yes. Hello, what is new? Wash back in the air. Come to the air. Hello, Adolf. What's new? Meine Freunde und Schweine rufen mal zusammen. Is that so? Im Reich sind gedrückt und halten rufen Schweine rufen Titten. Oh, die waren zusammen. What did Hitler say? What are you asking me for? Even the Germans can't understand him. <laughs> Past the Yukon, deep into Alaska, is Big Delta, last major stop before Fairbanks on the Alcan Highway. To American soldiers in Big Delta, to United States bases and outposts throughout the world, go camel cigarettes by the million. By the ton. For camels are first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. And wherever camel cigarettes go, to Alaska or to you, they stay fresh. Cool smoking and slow burning because camels are packed to go around the world. Yes, today, more people want camels. The fresh cigarette. The cigarette with more flavor. More people want camels now, both at home and overseas. If your store is sold out, remember, camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. Freddie Rich and the orchestra play a new Cole Porter tune, I Love You. Gazette, reporter Costello speaking. Costello, this is the editor of the Hollywood Evening Sun. Since you started your newspaper, the circulation of the Evening Sun is going down and down and down. What about it? 
See if the presses are working? <laughs> I'm telling you for the last time, Costello, you've got to stop wasting time around the office. From now on, you're going to be our police reporter. Police reporter? Yes. Now, let me explain your duties. Now, let's suppose you're standing on the corner of First and Main Street. It's three o'clock in the morning. Am I with a beautiful girl? Certainly not. Well, then what am I doing out so late? All right. You're a police reporter, and you're, uh, you're on duty. Yes. Suddenly, a car whizzes around the corner. A girl leaps out and yells, help. Help, I'm being kidnapped. Oh, boy, kidnappers. That's my meat. Ah, you've got to go after them. Oh, good. That's my meat. Ah, oh, there's going to be shooting, murder, and bloodshed. Oh, boy, that's my... I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. You must tear after the kidnappers. Uh, where's your car? Standing over there by the curb. Oh, oh, new car, old top. No, old car, new top. Oh, <laughs> quiet. Quickly, you jump into your car, and you stop the motor. Wait a minute, Abbott. First, got to put on a new pair of pants. New pants? For what? The guy that sold me the car said I had to put on new seat covers. No, no, no. You go tearing I didn't that one either. Never mind. I don't like it either. Just keep quiet. You go tearing after the kidnappers. There, there they are. They're gaining on them. They're gaining on each other. You're in right in back of them. Yeah. Then what do you do? I stop. Well, why did you stop? I'm out of gas. All right. You're out of gas. Quick. You pull into that filling station and tell the man you want Ethel. Suppose it's her day off. Will you please? <laughs> Will you stop that? Just tell the man to put Ethel in your car. Why should he put Ethel in my car? I don't even know the girl. <laughs> Look, Costello, all I want you to do is to get tanked up with Ethel. Tanked up with Ethel? Yes. <laughs> I never even touched the stuff. Oh, forget it. You, you get your gas, and away you go again. Suddenly you see the gangster's car. You pull up alongside of them and put on your handbrake. Put on what? What do you put on in case of an emergency? My bathrobe. Oh, come on. <laughs> Forget your bathrobe. You crawl out on your running board. Without my... Bud, 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 and you're as handsome, handsome as you are tall. Hey, what about me? Well, you're as handsome as you're tall, Shorty. Shorty, don't talk to me like that, Hopper, or I'll bust your vacuum cleaner. Now, now, what would I be doing with a vacuum cleaner? Where else could you get all that dirt? Ah, <laughs> well, uh, don't talk like that, Costello. Or Miss Hopper will never put you in her column. Well, she don't have to. I'll give her my own news. Hey, Hedda. Did you know that Hooses who was out with Watsons over at, you know who's, and they said so-and-so about, uh, what's him call it? You know, I heard about that. You did? Yes, but this is the first time I ever got the details. Uh, <laughs> and I invited you over here tonight to offer you a job of gossip columnist on our new paper, the Sherman Oaks Gazette. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd be so happy to help you out. I know everything that's going on in Hollywood, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Boston, No, the old dame, ain't she? <laughs> <laughs> Costello gossip is Miss Hopper's business. I know all about her business. She peeks through keyholes. Costello, I do not peek through keyholes. Then how come you're only bloodshot in one of your eyes? Now, 
Now, be careful what you say, Costello. I am. I ain't going to give her a chance to talk about me. <laughs> I don't think. Where am I? I see my place. Thank you. Okay. 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 I got it. Now, listen here, rabbit. If Hedda Hopper goes out to work in a Sherman, Sherman Oaks Gazette, I quiet. I quit. That's better. <laughs> I should make it bigger print. You can't see. She's got to prove to me that she can write a gossip column. Costello, Hedda has wonderful contacts. She has a host of friends. That's right. I know Cary Grant from the RKO lot, Hedy Lamar from the Metro lot, Bing Crosby from the Paramount lot. Yes, but do you know Cockeyed Louie? Where's he from? From the parking lot. Oh, Costello, shut up. <laughs> Here's little Connie Haynes to sing the lovely new tune, Spring Will Be a Little Late This Year. Spring will be a little late this year, a little late arriving in my lonely world over here for you. As if to say spring will be a little slow to start, a little slow reviving that music it made in my head. Yes. By Walking Cane. Oh, wait a minute, Freddy. Uh, just drop it down flat, will you? Yes, that's flat, all right. And it can be worse than your cigarette. Has wartime flatness hit your cigarette? Are you looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke? Well, then, get Camels for more flavor. More flavor that helps Camel cigarettes hold up. Keep from going flat, no matter how many you smoke. Yes, camels do have more flavor because they're expertly, matchlessly blended of costlier tobaccos. And we invite you to prove that for yourself in your own taste and throat, your T-zone. Your own taste will tell you that camel cigarettes have more flavor. And your throat will give you the last word on camel's smooth extra mildness. And remember, camel cigarettes stay fresh. Cool smoking and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Sweet A.M. T.L.S. Camel cigarettes. They're first in the service. They've got one. Hello, Sherman Oaks Gazette. Luke Costello speaking. What's that? You're in trouble again? No, I'm not going to help you anymore. You're always getting jammed, and I'm always getting you out. This is the end. I'm not getting you out of any more trouble. Goodbye. Costello, who was that? Dick Tracy. <laughs> He's having a lot of trouble lately with flat top. All right, quiet. Did you get any advertising today for our paper? Yes, I just got a classified ad. Uh, what does it say? Rent it. Rent it. Rent it. That late, let it alone. Wait a minute. Didn't you get any advertising? Yeah, here it is right here. What is it? Man with income tax blank. Would like to meet lady with income. Oh, <laughs> Costello, do you realize that the first edition of the Gazette goes to press at midnight and we haven't got a big front-page story yet? Where's the editor of this paper? I've got to see him. I've got a great story. Take it easy, pal. What's the yarn? I've just become the father of triplets. Hey, would you mind repeating that? Not if I can help it. <laughs> Costello, we're wasting time. I've got to have a story. I'll tell you a story, Abbott. Once there was a traveling sales... Hey, I'll... No, not that... 
Not that story. That's clean. Now, never mind. Oh, it's Hedda Hopper. Are you ready to go to press? Yes, come on, Hedda. First, I'll press you. <laughs> come on. Now, you press me. No, no, no. Costello, you can't do that to Miss Hopper. Now, you keep out of this. I belong to the press club. Oh. <laughs> come on, Hedda. Let's test those presses again. Boy, you sure can be happy with your nest egg. What nest egg? Don't tell me that thing on your head is a hat. Now, Costello. What time do you feed it? Just a minute. <laughs> Don't make fun. Don't make fun of Miss Hopper's hat. She's famous for her hats. Oh, this hat I'm wearing, I got at Saks Fifth Avenue. At fifty dollars, it's a good buy. Yes, good buy, fifty dollars. Nah. <laughs> what time do you expect it to go south? Now look, um... <laughs> look, you two. I hate to interrupt, but uh, our newspaper goes to press in two hours, and we still haven't got a big front page story. Oh, that reminds me. I can tell you how to get a great story. My dear friend, the Duchess of Frappingham, has just arrived in Hollywood, and she's having a big housewarming tonight. The whole blue book has been invited. Meet me there, and I'll introduce you to the right people. But how are we going to get in? Well, aren't you in Who's Who? No, I'm in Who's This? <laughs> well, you both join me at the Duchess of Frappingham's, and I'm sure you'll get a story. I'll see you later, boys. Well, here we are, Costello, the Duchess of Frappingham's. Now, remember, mind your manners. When they pass the food, say I'm not hungry. When they pass the drinks, say I'm not thirsty. Okay, but when they pass the girls, I'm going to add lib. <laughs> now, quiet. Now, now, be careful how you act, Costello. We must get a story for our paper from the Duchess. Now, let's go on in. Okay. Boy, boy. Hey, Abbott, yeah, this is some party. Yes, it's, it's very classy. Look, here's the butler announcing the guests. Listen. Presenting Lord and Lady Fotheringay from Stratford on the Avon, the Duke of Lockenbridge from Tellington on the Thames, Luke Costello from Dribbling on the Bib, <laughs> egg on the chin, and gravy on the vest. <laughs> Sloppy, ain't I? Oh, shut up, Costello. <laughs> Gentlemen, may I have your cards, please? In your Your old Bud Abbott, mayor of Sherman Oaks. And here's my card. But, sir, this is a baseball with nothing on it. That's me. Nothing on the ball. <laughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen. You have no invitation. I cannot admit you. Wait a minute. There's Hedda Hopper over there. She knows us. Hey, Hedda! Tell this flunky who we are. Uh, Heathcliff? Yes, madam. I don't even know these bums. Trans. Bums? I come from society. I beg your pardon, Miss Hopper, but I rub shoulders with Mrs. Van Vanderbilt, and I rub shoulders with Mrs. Astor, and I rub shoulders with Mrs. Whitney. You rub shoulders with them? Yes, and when my back stopped itching, I walked away. <laughs> Heathcliff? Heathcliff, what a name. Heathcliff. Oh, Heathcliff. Rebecca. That's from Withering Tights. <laughs> a Heathcliff. Cliff. Ha, heard you the first time. <laughs> Throw those two bombs out. It will be a pleasure, madam. Oh, Abbott. Uh, Abbott. I think my leg's broken. When I bite it, I can't feel anything. You're biting my leg. I wondered why there wasn't any meat on it. <laughs> oh, boys, boys, come on over here. Hey, it's Hedda Hopper. Hedda, what happened? Come in through this side door. I couldn't let you in the front way without an invitation. Now come with me and I'll introduce you to the Earl of Buckingham, the Earl of Brittenham, and the Earl of Cunningham. That's a lot of Earl. That's a lot of ham. <laughs> My, Miss Hopper, this place is certainly furnished beautifully. Oh, everything comes from England. All this furniture is covered with mohair. The sofas are covered with mohair. The chairs, everything's covered with mohair. It's a wonder Moe's got any hair left. <laughs> He's got more hair than you have, Abbott. All right, quiet. That chair over there looks better dressed than us. Ah, uh, hey, look. Heather, we've got to get a story. Where's the Duchess? There she is, talking to some friends in the trophy room. Hey, Abbott. Look at that big stuffed moose head by the fireplace. 
Shh, that's the Duchess. <laughs> Shh, her antlers fooled me. <laughs> oh, now come along and I'll introduce you. Oh, Duchess, may I present Abbott and Costello of the Sherman Oaks Gazette? Oh, how do you do? Look out, Abbott! She's seasick! <laughs> She must have had a rough trip coming over here from pinball on the tilt. <laughs> Hello, Ducky. Listen, I've got to get a story. I'm going to press. Going to press? Oh, I love that one. You press me and I'll press you and you press me. Here we go again, Abbott. Cut it out, Costello. Get the story. Oh, I think journalism is too divine. It's too, too divine. It's too, 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 too divine. Yes, it's too, 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 too. Train too. leaving at track five. <laughs> woo! Woo! Woo, woo! And now let the Duchess tell you... Let's just tell you her story. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Costello, this party celebrates the anniversary of my debut. I, uh, I came out in 1912. On parole? Costello! And in honor of this occasion, I'm wearing the same gown. This is my coming out dress. Oh, it is. If I had a shoehorn, I'd shove you back in again. <laughs> oh, what an insult. He's quick. Ruby found us out. That will be a pleasure, madam. Come on now. I'll you. Get out! Cut it out! Cut it out! Cut it out! Uh, he can't do that to me. I'm going to tell that guy a thing or two. Are you back again? Yes, I'm back again. Now, look, I've thrown you out of here twice. The first time, I blackened your eyes and broke three of your ribs. That's right. And the second time, I knocked out your front teeth and fractured your skull and collarbone. That's right. Then what are you doing back here again? I just want to show you there's no hard feelings. <laughs> oh, come on, Costello. We've got to go to press. Not with you. You don't even appeal to me. Oh, get out of here. Okay. Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks for the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute Navy Lieutenant Nathan G. Gordon of Marlton, Arkansas, pilot of the Catalina Patrol plane Black Cat. After an American raid on Kaviang, crews of eight United States planes shot down by anti-aircraft were floating in the enemy harbor. Lieutenant Gordon landed his Catalina right under enemy guns, picked up aviators, and repeated this three more times, all under heavy fire, until he had rescued 15 flyers. In honor of you and your crew, Lieutenant Nathan G. Gordon, the makers of camels are sending to our Navy men in the Pacific 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello, who will have Blondie and Dagwood Bumstead as their guests. And now here's Bud Abbott with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, don't forget our guests next week will be Blondie and Dagwood Bumstead. Oh, I know that Dagwood very well. He gets in a lot of trouble, don't he, Abbott? What do you mean? I went to grammar school with him. Once he came home with hives, and the teacher threw him out. No, they can't throw you out of school for having hives. These hives had bees in them. Oh, quiet. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night.